To all my producers out there, if you have unused beats on your hard drive and you don't know what to do with them and chances are you're probably not going to get them placed, well, find out how you can use those. Coming up next on the Music Money Makeover Show. What is going on, everybody? My name is Casey Graham. Welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. All right. We're still we're still in publishing deals here, but we're going... We're, brought, we're getting out of this space now. I want to start to give you all some games, some tips, and some points on how you can navigate through this music industry and actually make it work for you, all right? Just because this industry is set up a certain way doesn't mean it can be tailor fit to what it is you want to do, all right? So anyway, today we're jumping into this world of background music. Uh, it's the cousin to beat leasing, like you all who are on beat stars and sound click and all that stuff. It's the cousin to that, right? It is. It sits right alongside with something called production music or production library or library music. All right. So, what is background music? After giving you those cousins and those family members, it's basically instrumental beds that are used to carry content along. All right. So you will hear background music in maybe YouTube content. You'll hear background music in coffee shops and cafes, restaurants and retail stores, clothing stores, and all types of things like this, all right? You'll hear background music in reality TV shows, and you don't know it, but it's there to keep it going. It's that corny music you hear in those reality shows. And not to say that all background music is corny, because it's not, but in reality shows, a lot of times it is, all right? So you'll hear it in reality shows. You'll hear uh, background music in documentaries, all right, that you might see on Netflix or on YouTube or whatever like that. Point is, this is a space where unused beats can be put to use. All right, and so today I'm going to show you or give you some tips and tricks on how to navigate this space. All right, so let's jump in. Now with background music, it is not so much a place where you can take any beat and put it into a film format it has to be put into a production style film style format for use all right so you wouldn't take a beat that you use for an artist to get on because you have like a chorus and then you have a verse a pre-hook and a chorus right you go up and down and up but that sequence won't work in film like you want to build like i like to build it in let's say sequences of three because when i was in this market I would build it just like I would, like verse, pre-hook, chorus. Like I would build it up just like that. But how I would take it was I would have an intro, then I would build it up from the intro, right? On up, and I would do what we call in this world a button in. So you drop it off with a little delay and an echo, and then I would take that same sequence and make a bigger version. And then I would do it again, have a button in, and then build it up even more, even bigger and wider. Three movements of the same arrangement, just bigger and better every time. And then it was fit. It was repurposed now for usage in the background world. And it worked perfectly. All right. So now that's my tips and tricks on how to repurpose. Why would you want to do that? Well, here's some game for you. If you're a producer and let's say you're making beats, you're doing your Insta beat videos on Instagram, showing people you know how to finger drum and make beats. You need to put these beats out. Now you have fans of yours who are watching you create, all right? But these create these fans could be video producers or you know filmmakers, and you know people who just love music in general. They might love what you do, and there are a lot of instrumentalists out there, all right? So for the instrumentalist lovers, you'll make a beat tape album. For the uh, filmmakers, you want to make a background music collection or library music for them to use in your film their film production so you want to take the beat that you put on the beat tape and then you want to repurpose them for the background music now after you do that let's say all right well we want to put this in places where we can make some money how do we do this and where do we put it all right so our beat tape goes into our band camps our digital stores wherever you sell things straight direct to fan and even on spotify and apple music all right, and then the other tape goes into places like Audio Jungle and Pond 5 and all of the smaller libraries that you can put that music into, that production music, all right? From there, if you're so good or if you have you you built up your clientele and you think you want to go bigger, you can go bigger. You can go into libraries like Extreme Music, APM, 
all the production music libraries, all right? And they will get you into the, these places like uh, they'll put you on reality television or you can build a library yourself. You got a good about 1,000 tracks sitting around that you have already repurposed and have formatted. Sh go out there, sell your library. See if you can get it into television networks and things like that. Making money off of beats that are not really being used. Let's say you don't really like working with artists, but you love making music. You want to make the music how you want to make it. Well, this might be a great fit for you just to be an instrumentalist. And a lot of people are. All right. So now question is, after doing all the repurposing, getting it in the right places, in the right hands, what type of money do you stand to make off of this? All right. Well, the money. Uh, so let's talk about background music in general. All right. So if you're going on a lower level license base, you're looking anywhere from $10 on up to maybe 500 bucks, all right, on the smaller base. Um, this is for YouTube or like something like a um, like a business use. Let's say someone makes uh, directional videos for businesses, um, so you want to get paid for that. Um, I'm trying to think of any other uses. Uh, it's something like um, let's see, documentaries that may go on some online outlets, not necessarily a Netflix because if it was on Netflix, they had to pay you more. But these are ways that you can make money from those unused beats, all right? You make your solid money from the direct sale and the fans of those who um, love your music, then you make your money off your beat tape. You might sell your whole beat tape for $10, but you can sell one song to a filmmaker for 20 bucks, 25 bucks, 30 bucks, all right? To use it and have it licensed, and right? And, and, and at that point, right? you can now, you have now repurposed your beat tape. Now, this is just a little bonus tip. You can't take that same tape that you use and you encoded it with Shazam and all this other stuff and do it on the repurposed tape because it won't work in the YouTube world. They'll get flagged and all of that. That's not cool. Nobody wants that, all right? So now, what do you do after this, all right? So you've got to collect the money after they have paid for it. It is not royalty free. Your cousin is a royalty free song, but you wanna collect your money. So you need a BMI account or actually a PRO account, all right? You may need a Harry Fox account. Most of, most of the time, synchronizations don't deal with mechanical royalties. Mechanical royalties when it comes to being placed in a film or a documentary is often negotiated in the sync contract. All right, so we probably won't have to worry about the mechanical royalties there. All right, but um, just have it anyway. It's good to have it for uh, collecting money for your beat tape that's for sale on uh, Bandcamp and the one that is uh, on Spotify and Apple Music and all that good stuff. All right, so now that we have our account set up to collect the money, you know the price point for the background music, then now let's say, hmm, where will we go from here? There's a, there's a little... There's a little niche set up that most people don't know. A lot, actually, a lot of people don't know about. Maybe only publishers know about this. Um, it is that of business music, retail music, right? Um, in this retail space, you have people who fashion playlists for shoppers, right? And this is something that I talked about. If a lot of you who've been following me from my Facebook days, I've mentioned this several times. But you have places like Mood Media, the Play Network, Spotify for Business, Pandora for Business, people like these, they create music for shoppers' experiences to keep you in the store, right? So uh, there's one grocery store I go to that's near my home, and when I walk in there from time to time, I hear crisscross jump, jump. So when I hear that, I'm in the store, and I'm like, oh, yes, all right, I'm picking my apples, and I'm jamming, having fun, and that's what... Music does when you're in the stores. Now, a lot of times they'll use music with, with lyrics, but sometimes they won't, okay? Uh, has to be clean, always has to be clean, all right? And then you have places that will use a lot of hip hop music like sneaker stores and this, that, and the third where you can get your music on, all right? So I think you should consider looking at that. Other ways that you can expand this or promote your material is YouTube. All right, to 
after you repurpose, you collect your money, you, you've done all this stuff, now you get it. YouTube is a place where you won't make money off of it because, you know, before they did the whole thousand subscriber thing and they, you know, changed up how they pay out the ad revenue, people would get a lot of money from doing the tight beats, right? And that's your cousin out there. But the other one is the background music, all right? And if you go to search no copyright music or background music, you'll see a ton of it. People are always looking for this, all right? There are trends with the style of music people are looking for, but then people actually want certain types of background music for certain moods. If you put your music out there on YouTube, people will find it. You keyword it right, they will find it out there from you and you will build your catalog. Every new beat you make or repurpose, you put it out on YouTube and you don't look at it as I'm going to make money from YouTube. You look at it as an awareness campaign. And once you do that, you can build your brand bigger. All right. So what I would like for you to do at this point is download the profit maximization checklist below because the stuff that I talked about in this video is actually some of the accounts I talked about is, are in the profit maximization checklist. Why do you, why should you have this checklist? It's because you want to maximize the profit that you will get from all these sources. You want to make sure all of your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. And then if you want to scale that revenue up, then download the musician's guide to self publishing below as well. You can also text me 470-291-5767. That's 470-291-5767 to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me and I can give you some strategies on your personal situation to boost your income, all right? It's funny that I start this YouTube channel and I have a couple independent artists asking questions, but then months down the line, it starts to turn into major artists that actually find me and are asking ways of how can they set up their publishing, get their publishing back, maybe clear up some stuff or find money that they left on the table. I can do that for you as well. Text me 470-291-5767 and we can get that done. Anyway, that's been this week's video. I will get back with you all next week. Peace.